All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Pokemon manga review. It's been over 11 months since I've done this, and I'm back with Harrison again. What's up? Let's go. So, we've done a lot, a little research on the Pokemon Black and White manga, and you know, I come to think like, like I said before, in each one, each manga is very special. Each one has a very unique set of plot. But um, I'll, we're here to tell you our thoughts on the the manga. So, I guess I'll let Harrison take it off. Okay, well, let's see. You know, before we actually start and just kind of dive into the details of the uh, plot for this, uh, uh, you know, volume, uh, where would you rank black and white manga tier list of all the, uh, the chapters? Mm. Honestly, for me, I would rate it probably fourth place. For me it's fourth place for me mm -hmm. um at the top is ruby sapphire underneath is uh diamond and uh, diamond pro and platinum and third place for me is actually x and y okay what what about you where would you rate black and white mine is about fourth too but mine is situ uh mine like rank would be diamond pearl ruby sapphire gold uh the regular adventures oh Okay. Yeah. Regular Adventures. Yeah. The original, one. Okay. Yeah, the original yeah. Avengers, and then it'll be this one. It'll be this one. Okay. Uh. See. So. Actually, now, that, now, you know, now that I think about it, mm -hmm. I'll put the uh, gold, silver, uh, and crystal chapter high for X because I, I really liked both. Yeah. Um. About the same. Uh. But anyways. So. Black and white. So black. I don't know, he seems to have a really similar personality to Red, mm -hmm. but like compared to Red now, like Red's obviously much more mature, grown up, um, mellowed out a bit. Um, but like the fact that like Black was kind of like super ambitious from the beginning, similar to Red, the thing was like they both had a goal. It was just that like Black had always wanted to be the champion while Red just simply wanted to be the best. And I think a, a viewer commented that Red becoming the champion was just a means to an end. And it, like retrospectively, yeah, no, I can I can agree to that. Um, so let's see. At this point, they they made it so that Black is the one who has the the childhood friends of Bianca and Sharon, mm -hmm. right? With white being kind of like a, almost like the AI character, like the the, the side, you know, the, the main heroine introduced much later. Um, and actually, fun fact: if you didn't play the black and white games, or if you did, you've never bothered to actually check this out. If you go into the battle subway and go into the uh, double battle, you can actually team up with the uh, opposing, not the opposing, but the opposite uh, pro tag. They, they make a cameo there. And you can fight alongside them. But, um... Yeah. I don't know. You see, like, Black didn't really stand out too much for me. I guess, like, his biggest gimmick was, like, oh, yeah, by the way, I can, uh... I can use my, uh, m mana to eat my dream so I can focus on battle better. It's like, well, I guess that's a, that's a gimmick. <laughs> What, what do you think? What do you think, Choose? I think with with Black as a character, I think he's, like, he's very fun. Like, he's very down easy. He's not, like, very serious. Oh, yeah, um, for sure. I think him being a part of w, the, the WB agency was, and working with White was very good. It was very nice to see. I don't think I ever, ever saw something like that before. But, um... Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, um... I think what I also... I, I don't know how to say it. I don't... Sometimes something I also wish I liked was like there was time where he was serious and there was time he's had too much fun. I think I feel like he uh, didn't oh. take some of them seriously. Mm -hmm. I think his his what's it his uh, mellow personality made his made him lose a lot because yeah oh. because he is very fun as a character and it's very nice to uh, relate to. But I think that him being too lighthearted causes him a lot of things especially in the pokemon manga where everything's like battles a lot more serious i think that comes to hurt him a lot right 
And I think what this chapter does well that reflects in the game, or rather they reflect off the game really well, is the idea of, you know, Team Plasma pushing for Pokemon liberation and ideals about freeing Pokemon mm -hmm. and how he's actually using that against the Protex. He used that against White and, and convinced uh, his, uh, you know, his, uh, her, excuse me, her pick, uh, her Tepig to leave. Mm -hmm. Um, and then somehow, like, and misread the whole thing about his mana leaving, uh, cause, like, they didn't want to eat his dreams anymore. And yeah. it, it kind of scared me because I was like, oh my god, like, they left. Like, I've seen Pokemon leave their chance before. I mean, like, in the past, we saw Ruby, like, yell at his Feebas. You know, but like this time around, it was like, and was like basically, you know, because he can speak the Pokemon, right. convince him to like, yeah, no, it's not, uh, it's not really, like, good that y'all are together. But obviously, they proved him wrong. Um, but I think what you your point about him being too serious and not serious enough at times, it it made it so that uh. Towards the end, when he lost all his confidence, the fact that he, that his losses, actually affect him a lot more, because he doesn't know when to balance, when to take things seriously and when to not. I'm not saying he does that all the time. It's just that he has a good mix, but it's just not quite perfect. If you under, if you get what I mean, like I get it. let's 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 take it with uh, let's say Diamond right mm -hmm. Dia from the last chapter. Dia is like really goofy and all this stuff, and he can be serious, but his whole stick is that he's the comedy relief. Him and Pearl were the comedy relief. Yes, they were the protects, but again, their whole emphasis is comedy relief. But Dia is a lot smarter than he lets on. Like, so the thing with Black is that he's not dumb by any means. He has very good bow battle prowess, right? It's just that what it seems to me is that his relationships almost seem temporary or superficial. And a lot of that doesn't get fixed until the very end. So let's say, for example, Sharon and Bianca, childhood friends. They don't like, yes, they're childhood friends, but it just doesn't feel like super like they don't feel super close until towards the end of the chapter where flashbacks right um same thing with his other pokemon and i think another thing without without with that uh non like permanence like that temporary feeling is the fact that he changes his pokemon's nickname upon evolution like their name look at uh his tepic he initially named it tep then knight when he evolved the pig knight and then bow for uh for Embar. So I'm just like, why, why change it, dude? Like, <laughs> because you know, whenever you give them a name, like, that's you're endearingly like making them a part of your life. So I don't know. I I guess that that just is part of his personality. But I, personally, I did not like that he changed his Pokemon's nickname after like evolving because it almost feels like it's not the same Pokemon. Right. Um. I don't know, those are just my thoughts on white, uh, um, excuse me, on black. Mm -hmm. Um, white as a character, I think she's hard-headed in the same way as black. Like, she wants her business to succeed, she's business-oriented, but because of that, she seems to, like, kind of block out the voices of her Pokemon. Uh, specifically her Pig Knight. And because of that, that's probably why Tepic left in the first place after talking to N, because she didn't truly understand what her Pokemon was all about, and it back. So, but she redeemed herself, and they were able to take on Team Plasma and, you know, stop their plan. Uh, Charon? So, Charon was manipulated by Team Plasma, and so in the finals, Sharon had like, let's see, if I'm comparing Sharon to the games, Sharon in the beginning of the games was like, 
you just need to be strong and you can win. He wasn't an asshole, but he had a very like simplistic uh, point of view about strength and uh, Pokemon battle. And he wasn't like he was nice, supportive in the manga, but then in the end, that's when you see his early game counterpart. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh yeah, I can win through raw strength. But, you know, it's funny because it's like they snapped him out of it because, well, Karen, the thing with Sharon was the, what was his dream, you know, to, to break that manipulation spell? His dream. From when they were kids, and again, this is like fixing this, the appearance of superficial relationship between the characters. Uh, his dream from when he was a kid was to support and be there for his friend Black. And that's what snapped him out of his, like, spell, basically. Uh, so, mm -hmm. and I don't know, and then Bianca is pretty much the same. I mean, she eventually be like, she was straightened out by White. And, uh, I don't know, like, Bianca was just kind of there, had her daddy issues again, like there were in the, in the games. Um, but, I don't know, overall, in terms of our main characters, they're, they were okay. They were, they were alright, like, passable. Yeah. I, I, I could, uh, if I could read it again, I would, for sure. Yeah. What about you? Uh, I like the characters very well. Um, they were a lot more fleshed out, I would say. Mm -hmm. Um, they were very good. I mean, obviously, having played the game myself, I think, uh, I've always liked the characters. I just felt like in the game, there just wasn't enough screen time because every time you see them, they're just like, oh, let's fight me. So, like, the manga does it very well. You fleshed out a little more of their personalities. Mm -hmm. And, you know, speaking of personalities, moving on to N. N was yeah. a very, I thought he was a very great character to put in the, uh, the story. Mm-hmm. Because I think with N, he's very special because, like, he can talk to Pokemon. He knows the feeling of Pokemon. And he wants, you know, every, every one of them to be free. But right. my the whole idea with ideals of N and then Team Plasma is, like, Pokemon liberation, you know? They shouldn't be encapsulated in their Pokeballs. They should be free and not be controlled by humans. Mm -hmm. But in that context, I'm just... I'm thinking, like, how... Because, you know, we know Getsis was the one that raised N and, you know, turned him to what he is. Right. And and in my thing is, like, what N does, do you consider it, like, a, a like a, a noble thing? Oh, like liberating Pokemon? Liberating Pokemon, like having people separated from humans so they won't be in capsules to their, Pokemon, to their masters. I don't I know. I think... See, like, the thing with N's point of view... It's not wrong, per se, because I can definitely see some merit in it, but it's too tunnel vision, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. He's only seeing things from his perspective, and that's why it works for him being Zekrom. Mm -hmm. uh, Zekrom's user, because it's purely idealistic. Um, now, it, so like that's why it never made sense to me why N would choose Reshiram because his I because we'll say this in terms of society Pokemon society in the game the ideal for him is that Pokemon are free from humans free from the abuse yes they're bad people yes they're Pokemon who are being taken advantage of that are like not taken care of but there are also plenty plenty of counter examples to that people who take care people who can't uh, live without Pokemon. Pokemon can't live without people. They coexist. They cohabituate. They they exist in the fact that in harmony, right? Something that like he he doesn't realize himself until meeting the protect. And every time he talks to his people, the protagonist Pokemon, he's he's shocked. In game and in the manga, yeah, like, ooh, this is not anything like how I thought it was, and that's when you see his ideals start to crumble. Better, but yeah, yeah, stay. He remained firm until he was defeated, right? So if N is ideals, then Black is the one trying to show him the truth, mm -hmm. the ugly but also beautiful truth about po people and Pokemon yeah. being together. 
Yes, is it wrong for them to, like, you know, capture them and force them to live with them? Yeah, a bit. But... At the same time, there are people, Pokemon do that, wants to be with the trainers. Right. And... At the end of the day, it's really what you make of it, because if you... If you're a great person with your Pokemon, then they're gonna stay, but... The other way around, I mean... Then yeah, those are the ones that deserve to be, uh, like, punished, have their Pokemon released, that kind of thing. Uh, hey, at least this time, <laughs> this time the, uh, the Elite Four and the Gym Leaders take on Team Plasma. Team Plasma is the whole ass threat. Because I remember, like, the closest that, t uh, like, uh, the evil team was, like, uh, an overwhelming threat, at least on screen, was when... Uh, you were all alone against Team Plasma at End Castle at the end of Black and White. Mm -hmm. Do you remember where like the seven yeah. stages appeared? Yeah. And then suddenly like all the gym leaders show up and you're like, holy shit. Man, I was actually but... 1v8 to all of them. I really felt like Dude, I was ready to do that too. But funny enough, like in the manga, they, <laughs> the, the uh, gym leaders got fucking kidnapped and crucified. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't believe they I... put that in there, but I, I guess... Oh, good for them, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, but what did you think about uh <laughs> Black being shoved into the lightstone as the restaurant closed? I I, I don't know. It, it, when I saw it, I was like, okay, is he dead or is he like frozen? Because I think at a time we didn't know that he was fighting no, from the inside I out. No idea. I thought he was yeah, like no. gone. But I thought he was gone until like later on the main because like I don't know if something similar like this happened to uh, somebody else. I don't I don't want to say red because you know when he got frozen. Oh, I, like, he I thought he was for, like, thought, half a year. Yeah, I he thought he was gone, but like red. Mm -hmm. It's like I thought you sealed away into the uh, little orb too. Mm -hmm. But eventually well, you the... saw him, you know, fighting from inside. Right. Well, well, yeah, and we'll get to that another another time. Um, but. It's funny that they did the whole league thing yeah. uh, again, uh, where they even like teased uh, Black Two and White Two characters, Marlin, Colrus, uh, that kind of thing. So I, I'm glad they did that just because it makes sense for continuity. Like these aren't just some random characters uh, that were just randomly introduced, but if. If I had to change a few things about how this manga went, first of all, <laughs> I don't know if I would have kept End Zorua as Zorua. It made for more sense to for him to turn into a Zorua. Right. Wouldn't you think? Um, and another thing is that Gets is yes, hella evil. Hella fucking evil, but I I don't I don't know if Yetz is like losing to Black so easily was like the way it goes. I felt like they could have struggled a bit more because in the game that was a struggle. You beat N dialogue immediately gets this fight. This Hydro Gate like, on was rough, dude. But the cheating Hydra again, again, yeah, mind was, you. That was rough. And cheater, I dragon nine levels before its actual evolution. Yeah, so stupid. But yeah, I don't. We're probably wrapping this up. But like, I think. Oh no, no, no! The what's champion Elder? Oh, Elder. Yes. What did you yeah. think of him? In the manga. Yeah. Did he seemed pretty pretty uh, close to his uh, game counterpart? I don't know, like. I was surprised that like Alder lost so easily to end. I mean, of course, we never saw the fight, yeah. right? In both game and manga, but we only saw the out aftermath. But like Alder, like, come on, man, he seemed like a cool guy, but he's hmm. just—I think he's just kind of weak, man. I mean. Right. 
Legendary Pokemon are strong. Like, that is that much is a given. But I'm surprised that he didn't... He didn't put up more of a fight. Because, I mean, think about it. Like, even, like, say, for example, I want to say Cynthia. Mm -hmm. Cynthia's freaking team could, like, at least hold their own relatively against a Legendary. Alder just got demolished. So... I guess that's probably why Alder went on that training journey after mm -hmm. the fact and stepped down as champion. Um, I thought Alder was relatively bland, to be honest. It was cool, but I didn't really have any like attachment towards him, like if True. at all. Yeah, because like if he actually appeared a lot more. Than he did in, uh, then in say, oh, I don't know, black two and white two. Mm -hmm. I would like, because think about it. think about all the past games. So, Gen one, your rival appears. I mean, that's a given because he becomes a champion. But Gen two, Lance appears a couple times too. You actually fight alongside him and you see him and you're like, who's this cool looking guy? Champion. Then Gen three, you meet Steven a couple times too. All right. And then, although with Steven and Emerald, he's not the champion, but it's it's Wallace. But you can still fight Steven. And then Gen 4, you see Cynthia a couple times, and boom, it's Cynthia. Mm -hmm. Right? So Alder, like, if they had just kept that formula, I think it would have been fine. Because introducing, like, this random character and just making people guess, like, oh, is this person the champion? Or, like, what's their role? Because I'm not even going to lie... Like, I had no idea who the champion was, even though, like, those random characters keep appearing. Like, no clue. As a kid, no yeah. way. Never would have guessed it was Cynthia. Never would have guessed it was Steven or Slash Wallace. Never would have guessed it was Lance. Like, and never would have guessed it was my rival. <laughs> right, yeah. So, I, I think keeping that formula would have been okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so... Because it almost worked, again, in Black 2 and White 2, but as we know, it was Iris who was... Was the champion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think we said about what what we wanted. I think it was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, um, so, what would, would you rate it? What would you rate the Black and White manga overall? Uh, overall, I'll give it like a 7.5 out of 10. Seven and a half. I think that's a fair rating. I'll give it. I'll give it about the same. Yeah, like I, like I said before, I, everybody says anything. None of these mangas are bad. Not at all. It's just like some no, we just slightly no. prefer over another. For sure, and some are, are better executed than others. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm sorry about that. But... No, no, no. no. Uh, I was just gonna say I'm glad that at least with black and white, they they continue, they have a continuity and continue into black team one like they don't write off everyone like they do in the game mm -hmm. it's like in black team white too it's just kind of like oh yeah are they like or something like it's only been two years <laughs> right yeah so i think i think that's ended up for here so if you guys yeah. like the video comment down below and leave other suggestions of what we should talk about and yeah harrison do you want to end it off anything yeah we'll see y'all next time okay take care yeah.